let's play another game. I think I'll stick with 3-2. It's nice and chill. And, um, yeah, not worrying about dirty flagging. That last game was like a, I guess, dirty pre-move type trick. Rancho Wangdu from Vietnam. Nice. Um, I've never played this opponent before. Let's go for a Stafford. I said earlier I'm going to try and be different with openings of stream. But I won't just want one Stafford. Oh, D4. Okay, we're not getting a Stafford. We're getting some weird scotch type opening. I vaguely remember studying this actually. This is a, a position you usually don't reach because the knight's usually committed to c6. But I have no memory of what I studied. Like d5 looks interesting, but then e5. I probably should just castle. And castling rook e8. Eventually, this is probably the goal. I'm not scared of e5 here because rook e8 will pin the pawn. The pawn will be a weakness. Thank you, TY Hipkey. Appreciate the sub. Baby, baby. Oh, baby. Yeah, baby. Play this move. Where's Yasser? Yasser. Where's the. Uh... There used to be a drop down where you can choose the, the quote from Yasser. But okay, no time for that. I have to focus. A d5 actually kind of looks attractive right now. Always have to be alert of tactics, like the bishop's not defended. Wait, what is this? Take a pawn? Oh, that's tricky. Or is it? Okay, maybe it wasn't tricky. I'm just confused because it's kind of a new sort of opening position. Play bishop b6. Just a more stable square for the bishop. I want to play knight c6. We trade. It's okay. A5, I would then win a piece. Thank you, Idama, or Eden Ma, with the bits. Okay, so I'm up a pawn, have slightly damaged structure. Bishops are staring each other down. I mean, I'd like to take and damage white structure. The thing is, um, the pawns kind of look potentially weak, but they're hard to attack. Okay, here I'm going to have to take. I can just bishop here. There's rook d2. Might be too soon, though. Yeah, just completing development. Might want to play rook b8. Whoa, it's Joe Brune. Thanks, Joe Brune. That's the third raid of this stream, but the first raid from a non-Scrabble streamer. I appreciate that. People should check out Joe Brune. Link is in the chat. If you're just joining, I'm trying to not lose back a pawn. Yeah, this pawn is actually kind of weak, but so, so is white's second rank. So this pawn's undefended. Now the knight's tied down to the bishop. So white can't even take the pawn right away. Mm. Okay, now I can play rook d8. I mean, there's also... Play rook b8 first. 
Uh, question, question. I don't know. Play Rook. Rook B8 hit the pawn. Probably Rook D8 is coming next. Now, Knight's still tied down to the bishop, so as a Rook. I wanted to play Knight G4. What to do? Ah, my time. Maybe you just king f8. Bring the king closer. That's a nice position. Yeah, I'm realizing maybe I should have played some bishop g4 move. That's no longer possible. Some weird idea to maneuver. But the knight's tied down to the pawn. Some c5 idea. Also some bishop c8 idea. The bishop's not doing anything here. Much rather go after a pawn. Hmm. to play. I actually don't know what my plan is. Hmm. That's kind of scary. I have no idea what my plan is. Maybe this and this. Oh, I fell, I fell below 10 seconds. <laughs> Congratulations for people predicting correctly in chat. It was bound to happen. So, yeah, White wants to do some crazy thing, but... Oh, that's a move. To play this. Kind of losing back a pawn. That's not so comfortable. And bishop moves here, I have rook h2. Rook here, I have some bishop b5. I'm pretty sure that was a blunder. I mean, there's this move. It gets confusing. And this is looming now. Oh, this should be good for me. Because all the pawns are weak. But my pawns are weak too. I don't know what's going on. I know I'm threatening to take with check. King's a bit stuck. Hmm. It's a slow move, but... Ah, uh, this might be a draw. Actually, I don't know. I'm going to play this for a win. Oh, I should not have done that. No draws. Uh, I kind of messed up. No draws. I'm trying to live up to that. Rook for I take, and then we get some endgame. My opponent doesn't want to draw either. Okay, here we might have to force a draw. There we go. Hmm. 
That's so weird. What is this position? Okay, well, I'm playing for a win now. Go away, Windows Updater. Hmm, that was a bad. Mm. Let's still try and fight. Play this and then King H4 eventually. Have to be really careful here. Here we go. Okay, I'm winning now. Let's go. <laughs> I don't know how I'm winning this. So I gave a, a white threatening maiden one. So nifty. But every move, every legal move stops maiden one pretty much. So I gave a lecture on this um, for St. Louis Chess Club a while ago. It's one of these end games you must know. It's kind of a typical position you might get into um, thinking it should be an easy win for white, rook and two versus just one rook. But I've seen a lot of people mess this up. And actually, the three times I've gotten to this position, two of them were draws. And both, both draws, I had the, the worst side, I had, I had the black side. And both my opponents actually walked into some sale matrix. And the plan is to push. It's to basically keep marching up. It was a cool winning idea. Let's move on to play this. So the winning idea involves pushing the pawn, uh, forcing the rook back, and then this move. There's a few ways to win, but yeah, and then this move. And this is one of my more favorite lines to show because I think it's, uh, it's pretty aesthetic in the way white wins. The move that I would choose here is play rook f8. Sacking the rook, but getting into a completely winning um, end game despite not having a rook. And then this move. I just realized I would have had to, there's a line where I have to under promote to knight or bishop. I would have had to do the under promotion keyboard trick. Okay, that was nice. Nice little end game scenario. I'll have to find the video where I, uh, I show this end game strategy. And it's also very important to kind of have a general knowledge of like common end games because usually by the time you reach the end game, you're low on time and you want to make sure that you have kind of foundational knowledge to, um, to fall back on. So you're not having to rely on figuring things out, but you already kind of know what to do in the position. Like a machine, yes. Um, this is really about just like gradually working your way up, getting the pawns to the, in this case, the third rank and putting the rook here and going for the check. Okay. So, uh, that was an event, very eventful game. Uh, let me go, I'll add this to the study. Whoa. Whoa, it's wonder prone. Let's go. Yeah, these games have been... Very eventful so far. Wait, do I have the... Let's open another tab. Ah. Uh, okay, let's just go here. And there's a lot of things to address in this game. So I'll, I'll share the opening, f or the, um, not the opening, the end game first. Because it's a cool idea. It's not too often where the winning strategy in a rook ending is to sack your rook. But in this case, it works. Oh, Adfo yeah, Adfoss loves under promotions. So probably the trickier move to play, and both moves are losing, but maybe the trickier move is this. And black only has two winning moves here. It's one of these rare cases where promoting to queen or rook are both stalemates. 
So you have to promote to knight or bishop. Either one is fine. You promote to bishop, you, you can then, um, yeah, as long as you're controlling the queening square. This could lead to mate. So, yeah, this is my fourth game. So I've, I've won all four games I've played this stream. And some of these games I have probably don't deserve to win. Um, yeah, the tricky thing with sometimes with this end game, it's so easy to mess up. Like a lot of players, what they'll do is they'll push this pawn too early and then it turns into a draw after this move. You have to be very careful, especially with like H and G pawn that you're not stalemating the pawn's king because this is basically just an instant draw. If takes or takes, it stalemates. But uh, yeah, this is nice. And just to show, there, there's a very efficient way to mate here. I'll give this to chat. I've probably shown this at some point before. Oh, it's a useful position to like know the, the right or most precise move. This is black to move, made in two. Oh, a lot of people already know it. Good job, chat. I know Ben Feingold has shown this before in some lecture. Um, but yeah, rather than moving your king, after which white would keep running away, you move your queen to force the king back towards your own king. And then I think Ben Feingold preaches that you, sh you shouldn't play this move because this is kind of a long distance. Shorter distance is to play queen a f or queen h5 because you consume less energy. Shorter distance. Anyway, um, yeah, this is why end games are important. If we go back, I'm sure this was just a draw, like the whole time. Even when I'm up a pawn and we traded, when I got this pawn, it should still be a draw. Actually, this so this sort of game, it's probably easier to just reflect on... Um, to see if there are any moments missed with the computer analysis. Um, the great thing about Lee Chess is even if you're in a study, you can still request computer analysis with this little toggle. So it'll run the graph. Um, but yeah, we played an opening I don't get too often because uh, most people either take the pawn and we go into a Stafford or they play this move. But d4... Oh, black's already better? Oh, maybe this is... Yeah, it's pleasant for black. This is what I played. I played all the Sockfish moves. White just lost a pawn. Yeah, it's very natural. Like, just you... You castle and get the e-file before white completes development. Okay. It's useful to know that like this line isn't so great for white. That's still probably playable. But yeah, I, I definitely made some error later. But white resisted pretty well. Yeah, this is really tricky. Because both kings were kind of in danger. White was ready to promote. King g8 apparently is the, the way to play for a win. Mm. Oh, wait, white was winning? What was this? So some of these evaluations are based on very low depth, but apparently this is winning. So key move, it looks like rook d2. Oh, rook d2. Wow. And if takes, I have uh, white queens with mate. And then white's also preventing second rank shenanigans. And my king's still in danger. Wow, what a move. That's hard to find with low time. Anyway. 
Okay. Yeah, kind of a, a topsy turvy game. So it was drawn up until Rook A four was a blunder. Oh, Rook B six. Wait, or King F two? Wait, I don't understand why King F two is still drawing. Can I use the same idea? Okay, why is Rook A4 losing? Because this... And I was able to win the pawn. So why is King F2 drawing? I go for the same idea. Oh, it's not check. Ah. Uh, so I play King H4, I'm threatening to check and win the pawn. So White's key resource is Rook here, which could be played immediately. And I can't actually win the pawn without losing this pawn. What if I, if I play this? Then king h3. And if I take, there's this tactic. And this is drawn. Yeah, end games are tricky. And sometimes end games get tactical, even with so few pieces on the board. Okay, I sipped tea. Uh, for Sparky ZZZ. Almost out of tea.